Till now in our series of dental anatomy, we have discussed the anatomy of permanent mandibular secondary molar from the buccal and the lingual aspect. Continuing with the same in this video, we will be dealing with the mesial and the distal aspect of this tooth. Watch the video till the end to understand it well. Hi. We at Dentarize welcome you all to a platform where we help you to conceptualize, visualize and memorize dentistry. So far we know that a permanent mandibular secondary molar has just one root but can have two or three cusps. Therefore, starting with the mesial aspect first, we will be discussing the features of mesial aspect by comparing with the mesial aspect of mandibular first premolar. Starting with the first heading that is the dimensions, the buccolingual dimension at the greatest curvature buccally and lingually is 8 mm, while the buccolingual dimension at the cervix or the cervical line is 7 mm. If we compare these buccolingual dimensions of permanent mandibular second premolar with that of the mandibular first premolar, we would notice that the crown and the root of second premolar are wider buccolingually than that of the first premolar. After the dimensions, the second heading would be the buccal cusp. The subheadings in the buccal cusp would be the position of the buccal cusp and the length of the buccal cusp. If we talk about the position of the buccal cusp, then in a permanent mandibular first premolar, the buccal cusp is present in the center. While in a permanent mandibular second premolar, the buccal cusp is not present in the center of the tooth, very well evident in the figures. If we talk about the length of the buccal cusp, then in a first premolar, the length of the buccal cusp is longer as compared to that of the second premolar in which the buccal cusp is shorter. Please observe the figure very carefully. Coming to the third heading that is the lingual cusp, as very obvious in the figure, the lingual cusp development in a permanent mandibular second premolar is greater than that of the first premolar. Since the lingual lobe development is greater in a permanent mandibular second premolar, less of the occlusal surface is seen in this tooth as compared to that of the first premolar. Please observe the figure. After the dimensions, the length of the buccal cusp, position of the buccal cusp and the lingual cusp, let's talk about the fourth heading that is the mesial marginal ridge. In a permanent mandibular second premolar, as we can see in the figure, the mesial marginal ridge is at right angles to the long axis of the tooth, which is not the case in a permanent mandibular first premolar. Now, let's learn about one striking feature which is seen in the permanent mandibular first premolar but not appreciated in the permanent mandibular second premolar, that is the presence of the mesiolingual developmental groove. It is present only in the mandibular first premolar but no such mesiolingual developmental groove is present on the crown portion of the permanent mandibular second premolar. So enumerating the headings which we have discussed in the mesial aspect crown portion of this tooth, we first discussed about the dimensions, the buccal cusp in terms of the position of the buccal cusp and the length of the buccal cusp, then we talked about the lingual cusp, the amount of occlusal surface seen, the mesial marginal ridge and then the presence or absence of the mesolingual developmental groove. Now coming to the root from the mesial aspect, in a permanent mandibular second premolar, the root is longer and in most cases slightly convex on the mesial surface. However, the convexity is not always present. Please observe the figure. If we talk about the apex of the root, then the apex of the root is usually blunter on the second premolar than that of the first premolar. So this was all about the mesial aspect of this tooth. Talking about the distal aspect, we would be describing the features of distal aspect by making direct comparisons with that of the mesial aspect. In a permanent mandibular second premolar, the distal and the mesial aspect are very much similar except for one striking difference. The difference is that on the distal aspect, more of the occlusal surface is seen as that of the mesial aspect. This is because the distal marginal ridge is at a lower level than that of the mesial marginal ridge when the tooth is posed vertically. This lower placement of distal marginal ridge makes more of the occlusal surface visible from the distal aspect than that of the mesial aspect. Also, 
The crowns of all the posterior teeth are tipped distally to the long axis of the roots so that when the specimen of the tooth is held vertically, more of the occlusal surface may be seen from the distal aspect than that of the mesial aspect. This is a characteristic feature possessed by all the posterior teeth, be it mandibular or the maxillary. So this was all about the mesial and the distal aspect of this tooth. In our next video, we will be explaining in detail about the occlusal aspect. If you like our content, please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon so that you can get notified whenever we upload any new video. Suggestions are always welcome from your side. Stay tuned. Stay safe. Thank you for watching.